Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast. It's episode 241. It's the show where we get geeky, talk tech, social media, and more with the local nerds that use it. That's us. That's us. Um, here in Pittsburgh, PA, for the most part. Sometimes we branch out a little bit. For this week, we're keeping it local and uh, keeping it awesome. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron, uh, proprietor here at uh, SorgatronMedia.com, live from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Um, it's stu- it's a remote week for John Chichilla. He's at Chilla from a uh, 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 Chilla Central. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that's that's a new place, new name for the place. Yeah, you Chilla a, Central. You got a couch over there, and I know I know I've seen the tech on the other side. So okay. uh, you you got a lot Sor- going on there. Sorgatron Studios Annex. That's right. There you go. <laughs> and over in Studio B in Dormont, PA, is John Chichilla. <laughs> How you doing this week? this week? Awesome, awesome. Also, we got a great guest. We were just talking before. She seems to pop up everywhere. Uh, that I end up at in events around uh, uh, Pittsburgh. Um, Laura Kelly is joining us from. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. My numbers aren't working. There she is uh, from Innovation Works. We talk about some great spinoffs there with uh, Alpha Lab, Alpha Lab Gear. I want to talk a bit more about that. How are you doing tonight? I'm great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> She's uh, coming at us from uh, uh, Alpha Lab Gear, and I want to talk a little bit about what's happening around you here in a moment. Yeah. But first, yeah, I don't know if you can hear the bass behind me. I mean, I just have that wherever I go, let's be honest. It's all about the, uh, all about the base. Because Upcries is having their mixer, um, and there's about 400 people behind me, um, with half of them coming from nonprofits and half of them coming from startups and tech um, and corporations, which is such a cool mix of people. Um, it's a They're doing a great job, and, and the ideas that are being um, tossed around are great. Awesome, awesome, man! That's one thing we were talking about last week. So, so, so we gave the option if you want to skip this show live, you could go over the uprise. Well, she's doing both, so Absolutely. I want to I want to give her the MVP award for podcast day right now because she is completely uh, joining us mid party. So that's awesome. Thank you very much. Um, but we'll get into that. I, I want you to fill us in on what's going on with the innovation works and, and some of the cool stuff happening in the city. So, um, so. Anyways, if you're hitting us for the first time or long time, no time, who knows? Awesomecast.net is where you can find this, all the mini Awesomecasts. I'm trying to hit some news items and thoughts uh, day-to-day here, four days a week, uh, including some Instagram stuff that was released. And we'll talk about some even more, it uh, looks like, coming up in the show. Uh, you can find us at Awesomecast on Twitter. We're on Facebook, Google+, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio uh, to find out what's going on uh, day-to-day with uh, Awesomecast. And uh, make sure you don't miss an episode. So whatever is your preferred format, video and audio, it's all available. And of course, you can join us, you can join us here live. I think I'm officially moving this up to 7 p.m., guys, the way this other show's going. You know, how about 6.45? 6.45, you can join us about live.awesomecast.net. Seems to be a good number right now. Um, and, uh, 6.53. 6.53. <laughs> Uh, roundabout. I mean, you can catch a little bit of the rambling movie minute beforehand. We're having a lot of fun there, of course. There's a little bit of spillover. So, um, so let's get into it with the awesome things of the week. Uh, Laura, we want to talk to you first, of course. Uh, find out what's going. First of all, what is Innovation Works specifically? Yeah. So, uh, Innovation Works is a part of the Ben Franklin Technology Partners. Um, so, there's four in the state of Pennsylvania. We're the ones for the Southwestern PA region. Um, what we do is we invest in technology startups. Um, so basically, I have the coolest job in the world because I talk about these amazing companies all day. I get to spend a lot of time talking about robots, which who doesn't love that? Um, well, and you're looking at our websites. That's so great. Um, yeah, so. Innovation Works, um, we have a few programs. Um, Innovation Works is one of them, uh, which we have about 200 tech companies within our portfolio. Um, and then we have Alpha Lab and Alpha Lab Gear, which are our accelerators. Um, Alpha Lab is more of the software side of things, Alpha Lab Gear is the hardware side of things. Um, and then Room for Adventures, which is a brand new fund that we have for more of the Series B type. Uh, companies, so companies that are further along, 
so that we stay a part of these companies that are right here in our region, um, which are doing so many awesome things, not just for the technology movement, but for the Pittsburgh movement, which uh, I love as a Pittsburgher. I think it's the coolest. Awesome. Sorry, I was having some camera work here. If you're on video, <laughs> my numbers are a little screwed up tonight. Um, so, so awesome. So you guys, um, and, and, and what I think is interesting with with the Alpha Lab program in particular, um, I know you like uh, if you're into the program, there's really an emphasis on keeping at least a foot in the door, a foot in Pennsylvania, so people aren't uh, seems like retreating off to San Francisco, the usual suspects yeah. for, for, for a lot of startups, which is, I think is really important. And really, uh, it, from seeing you guys grow, because I mean, I, I've heard about Alpha Lab years, years ago when, when they first started, you know, hosting meet and greets and stuff for PodCamp, who knows when, uh, like three, I don't know what it was. Um, and, and to see that grow and you guys moving into a bigger spaces over in uh, East Liberty and everything is, is, is pretty tremendous and here and everything. Um, yeah. Um, and what I think is really cool is, while we certainly encourage companies to stay here um, once we invest in them, it's not a hard sell. Mm -hmm. You know, once companies are here, they want to stay here. And, you know, we get companies coming in for Alpha Lab and Alpha Lab gear from all over the place because the programs are so strong. And then they stay here because, one, Pittsburgh is so freaking affordable. Um, one. Two, there's so many things to do. Uh, you know, the arts, the sports, the you know, general recreation. And because it's so affordable, you can actually afford to do it while you're starting a startup. Um, and three, the technology, you know, community here is just so supportive of one another. Um, we were working on our uh, annual report that will be coming out later in the year. And each company that I interviewed, I asked them, you know, what's the Pittsburgh tech scene like? What's the Pittsburgh startup scene like? And they told me it's so supportive. Nobody sees anyone else as uh, a competitor. They see each other as, you know, part of this community. Everybody's helping everyone else get ahead. It's one of those, you know, a rising tide raises all boats type of thing, mm -hmm. um, which is so refreshing to see and not what you get at a lot of other places. And so when we're investing in companies and they're coming here, um, and they see that they choose to stay, despite the fact that it snowed today on March 24th. But whatever, it's fine. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, we're looking at, we, you know, we've had a great opportunity to talk with a lot of your companies. I'm showing some video here from when we talked to Identitech. that has got this great drone thing going on. And we talked to a few people, even... Um, uh, the guys just a few weeks ago, uh, you know, and I know one was from Chicago and came here to Pittsburgh. It's not just, you know, of course, there's a lot of people coming out of Carnegie Mellon, and this is a great thing for them to step out and have this uh, as an option, uh, yeah. which is a great you know incubator for talent and ideas in general, I think. Um, and it's great to see them not running off. I mean, I, I love every time I hear Carnegie Mellon in the news like teaming with a Google or an Uber or whatever the heck the new smart car news is these days, right? Or Roblox, especially robotics. Um, so, I, so, so uh, I, the reason I want to have you on, because I know you're the person I go to. You're the person I find <laughs> that I target when I go to the open coffee club and say, hey, who's, who's the cool people to talk to this time? <laughs> um, so uh, what, what is cool coming up? We, 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 I, saw, I talked to a couple companies. Again, we've had a couple on the show. Um, but who's really, uh, who, who's really got your attention uh, these days uh, coming out of any of, the, any of the programs coming up? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, three hours ago, Tops, I sent out a save the date for the next demo day, the Alpha Lab, Alpha Lab Gear demo day, which is on June 2nd. Um, it's coming up really quick. Uh, they're starting to feel the pressure back there, but they're all gonna do such an amazing job. Um, and when you say, you know, tell me about a cool company, there are a lot. Uh, you know, each, each company that I meet, I get so excited about because, you know, they're either doing something really good for the world or they're doing something really creative that no one's done before. Um, but the one that I actually want to talk to you guys about today, believe it or not, is a bra company. Okay. I'm, I'm pausing for reaction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I need, I, are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> <laughs> so the company is called Trust Laundry. They're a part of uh, Alpha Lab Gear cycle right now. Um, and so what they're doing is they're reinventing the bra for larger-breasted women. Um, and 
the way I see it, and this is not the way that they describe it, but the way I see it is, what if we would have never reinvented the car after Henry Ford? If we were just like, yeah, the model tastes great. Like, can you imagine trying to get even to work right now? It would be so impossible to try to get from point A to point B. Um, crank crank so, start and all. Exactly. Although we probably would all have much better arm muscles, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, so what Tress Lingerie is doing is they're taking a really antiquated um, system and they're re-engineering it. And I mean, every time that I meet with the women behind this company, it's amazing the, um, the engineering that is going behind this. How they describe it is it's like having a bridge that goes over a little stream and trying to stretch it across the chest piece. You know, it's if you took that same technology to stretch it across something so much wider, so much more massive, you wouldn't have the same, like, I wouldn't want to drive my car across that. Um, and that's what the industry is right now. So, um, you know, it's awesome to think about robots and, uh, you know, about drones and all of these things that are so next gen when it comes to technology. Uh, but what they're doing is making technologies that already exist better. They're bringing it to 2015. Um, and, you know, they're improving lives. You know, when, when we think about uh, social entrepreneurship, that's not what we're thinking about. We're thinking about people who are saving babies and, you know, improving uh, lifestyles and things like that, which are all great. But this is improving a lifestyle, you know, reducing back pain, reducing uh, peer pressure, reducing all of those things that many of us don't even think about because it's not an issue that we deal with and not something that, you know, we've ever been told, oh, this is a problem. So it's a really cool thing there. Um, their office here at Alpha Lab Gear, you know, is just filled with these industrial size uh, sewing machines. They're, they all taught themselves how to sew. They're, they're out of CMU in industrial design, um, which is how they know each other. And uh, they're doing really, really cool things. And I, I for one, um, am excited because they're, you know, not, not only are they going after an untraditional field when it comes to startups and technology, but they're also like, breaking down barriers when it comes to women in entrepreneurship. You know, they're doing something, they're, they're doing something by women for women, which is fantastic and so cool. And I'm happy to know them. It's awesome. Uh, and I think that's the biggest thing is it, with a lot of this, I think we get, you know, like you said, we get, you know, hey, robots and, and smartwatches and, and, and who knows, but it's, it, it's, it, it's these things that solve a problem, like the iPad solved problems we didn't know we had or had a reason to use this thing that we didn't know existed, right? Um, but but those things, just those life improving things, are, are, are really great. I, I, and certainly, like the last uh, uh, demo day I attended, um, you know, I, I'm kind of surprised some of the outside the box things. Like when I think gear, I think the drone thing. I think making something with 3D printers. You know, maybe something like this is at least I think manufacturing when I think something like that, right? Um, but then there was there was one that was just like kind of a I don't want just for relation kind of a loot crate kind of service i think it was a uh, uh, hey romeo wasn't it romeo uh, delivered romeo yeah. delivered thank thank you and it was like a uh, helper for guys like me that maybe don't know how to be romantic and kind of can set up gift kind of ideas for yeah for it. Um, like and it, romeo delivers um since demo day they've pivoted a bit um so mm -hmm. now it's not just for guys like you who don't know how to be romantic it's for anyone who wants to do something special for someone, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily know how. So, um, you know, if for Mother's Day, instead of sending my mom flowers like I do every year, I want to send her a message in a bottle. I can now. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's right. It's um, but they're doing it in a in a cool way. You know, they're having yeah, there it is. Um, you know, they have this website. It's a little something for everyone, and you can you know the, they have the banners with the, the letter banners. They have so many cool things that, um, you know, if we, we all think, oh yeah, I can do that. But none of us actually do, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're doing mm -hmm. it for us. It's the same thing as going on. And, you know, it's, um, it's like that Walgreens commercial. It's the thought that counts. Like <laughs> they're making the thought actually count. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And, and definitely, I, I was really impressed by, by Demo Day. It feels like uh, we've been talking about, of course, Silicon Valley's coming back, right? And um, and if you've watched that, you're like a lot of people say that that's really, and I don't know if you guys, I don't know if it's the talk at Alpha Lab, uh, this show, uh, but I know a lot of the tech podcasts, you know, startup y kind of stuff I hear from California is like, well, yeah, that's pretty much how it's like, just a little funnier, right? Um, it feels like that kind of presentation y thing. Uh, uh, that that you would observe from something like that uh, when you're checking out this. The, at least that was my impression of it. Uh, it's a really cool uh, uh, kind of presentation they have down there. Are you guys down at Stage AE again? I uh, guess the June second one. Yep, uh, Stage AE. Awesome, and, and it's again, you know, there's, these these are their their big pitch. You know, um, can you tell us a little bit of the the basic concept around demo day. You could probably do it much better than I am. <laughs> yeah, sure. So. Um, Apple Lab and Apple Lab Gear, they have two different cycles, um, but they both culminate in Demo Day, uh, which is, for for this joint one, is on June 2nd. Uh, And while they're building their business, they're thinking about, okay, how do I pitch this to investors? Mm -hmm. Uh, And Demo Day is their first time to really go out and do that. We try to bring in investors for them, um, and each year, the number of outside investors keeps growing, which is great for Pittsburgh in general and for these companies. Um, and then I, I believe the last demo day, they had eight minutes uh, to pitch, and they talk about you know what what they're going to do, what their product does, um, who is going to buy their product, um, what the you know long term goals of this product are, um, and you know, then the investors have a chance to talk to them one-on-one. Um, there's, of course, due diligence that goes into it as they, um, you know, try to decide what the um, what, what, what they want to invest, what they, uh, you know, see as a viable product. Um, and then they go from there. So that's, I mean, it's almost like they're coming out party. Um, while many of our companies are making deals now, they are getting customers, uh, they're, you know, refining their product that is the time that it's like okay it is it's on this is this is our company we're live we're out here um and it's it's a cool thing you know even if you're not an investor um for the community to come see what pittsburgh is doing you know it's cool to see um what these companies are capable of and uh like i said it's cool to see that they're choosing to do that at pittsburgh Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, again, if anybody wants to check you out, innovationworks.org, Alpha Lab, Alpha Lab gear, all linked off of there. Um, any, any other big initiatives coming up people need to know about? Um, so, really, uh, like I said, I'm at Uprise, which right. I, I'm just going to get excited about because I think it's so cool. <laughs> uh, it's uh, for nonprofits to get matched with. Um, for profits who are making something that helps them. So for profit companies are competing with something that is helping the greater good. Um, and we have a lot of companies like that within Innovation Works and uh, Alpha Lab and Alpha Lab here. Um, off the top of my head, Thread, if uh, you're familiar with them, they take plastic bottles out of Haiti and Honduras and recycle it into. Mm-hmm material. So it's creating jobs in those places and it's recycling. Um, Roris, which is one of our companies here in um, Alpha Lab Gear, they are uh, making uh, water filtration systems um, so that are very portable and pretty inexpensive um, so that, you know, the third world has access to clean water. And, you know, if you're going on a big long hike, you have access to clean water too. Um, Pika Labs, which is one of our Innovation Works uh, portfolio companies, they're developing, um, or they've developed really, uh, um, an artificial heart valve for babies with heart defects, which what's better than saving babies? Um, so we're, we're, we've been seeing these companies who are trying to do something really good while they're trying to create a startup. And now the Forbes funds, um, and I believe it's BNY Mellon, uh, and if I got that wrong, my apologies, um, are doing something to reward these people. They're, you know, having this pitch competition for investment dollars to do something for the greater good. Um, And that's where I'm at now. And I, for one, am so excited about it. It's right up my alley. It's one of those things. uh, Pika Labs 
uh, the the company that is creating the uh, the artificial heart valve. Every time I see the pitch, I start to cry, <laughs> um, and I feel like with a prize, it's going to just be waterworks That's the whole awesome. time because it's going to be you know people trying to do something for somebody else while they're being creative and inventive. And innovative. We got a live fee going from the hashtag here from Upprise. It looks like, yeah, okay. So this is these are this is everybody you hear in the next room, apparently. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, go. It, it's a hashtag up, the, up. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead uh, what was the What was the clean water water filtration system company? Roris. 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 Yes. Like Katy Perry, you're gonna hear me roar. <laughs> and us, like the three of us, hanging out. Okay. Um, that's probably not how you spell it, though. I think it's R O R U S. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so uh, it is, it's the first one. We had a party going on next door to the awesome cast. Um, <laughs> every time you talk you, to me, guys. Every time you, you talk to me. <laughs> are you in your office? Um, I'm at Alpha Lab Gear, so I uh, am uh, coaching somebody else's office. <laughs> so that's a lot of post it notes. <laughs> yeah, those are mine. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Is, where can people go to check out Upprise in general if they want to check it out after the fact? So uh, it's Upprise, and let me make sure that I'm not lying to you. I think it's Upprise.org. Um, let's just pop that up real quick um, in case it's dark. Yeah, it's Upprise.org. Okay. Um, and I, April 15th is when the application deadline is in. So if you have something um, that would you know, help the greater good, by all means, um, mm -hmm. go there and apply it. The first round of applications is a two minute video. Um, I feel like I've been talking for like 75 minutes at this point. So two minutes is nothing. <laughs> um, so yeah, it has all of the information, the types of companies that are looking for, um, for this round um, and yeah, I mean the companies that I talked to tonight are doing some cool stuff, which awesome. is great. Awesome. I uh, early on talking with uh, a former uh, uh, guy down there at uh, Alpha Lab. Um, I know he was very much like if you, even if you have a, just an inkling of an idea, apply, give it a shot, you know, and if nothing else, you'll get uh, you know some feedback. Uh, yeah. So I, I, exactly. Um, you know, my boss and I in the communications department. We want so badly people to see us as the approachable experts, um, and not just her and I, but the entire company. Um, so yeah, you know, regardless of whether you have a developed uh, business plan or not, let us know about it. We, that's, that's why we're here. We're, we want to um, give you feedback. We want to help you grow because um, we also believe that a rising tide really raises all boats. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, uh, there was something else really cool that uh, happened today, um, and that was the uh, uh, hashtag Berg PPU event today um, with uh, the, oh, wait, wait, I got the flyer here because I always butcher names. There we go. This is how I got my notes on paper today for a social media event. Um, but uh, no, this was a great event. Hashtag Berg, I'm sorry, at, at Point Park uh, was the event. A great feed, uh, free event. Um, their hashed, their um, the keynoter was Sri Srinivasan? Did you, did I, am I close? Um, but uh, really awesome speaker. He's actually uh, the chief digital officer at the, the Met, the Metropolitan Museum of Art there in New York City. I've been to the Met. It's freaking amazing. If you're ever in New York City, around Central Park, uh, on the, what, the east side. Um, I don't know, whatever side. Uh, go check it out. It, it's tremendous. Um, he, he gave a good 45 minute or so talk about social media. Um, some really cool ideas. Um, and just really kind of the do's and don'ts and, and about getting out there. And, and it was, it was, it was great because he, he was like, he was, he was like, you know, who, who's, who's on LinkedIn? Who understands LinkedIn? And none of us do. Um, I, I wonder, uh, Kelly, what were your thoughts on today's talk? Um, I loved it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so I sort of have a chip on my shoulder when it comes to social media talks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just like, okay, yeah, these would be great if I were um, starting from scratch, but I'm not. Um, and this one was speaking to me. You know, I took right. so many notes. I won super entertaining, which was great. Uh, but he also really knew what he was talking about, uh, which was awesome. 
Um, I feel like I'm saying awesome a lot because this is the awesome cast. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. You're, you're, you're in the right vibe then. <laughs> um, you know, and the panel was really good too. And you could tell that the audience, you know, they were the right group for the audience that they had um, as far as, you know, what people were asking um, and what information they were giving. Um, but I'm excited for some of the tools that I wasn't familiar with. Um, I'm going to cheat and look on my phone to see which ones <laughs> um I, I, me too uh triangulate he, he called out that's I exactly a, what i was just gonna say i i, I these were um these were th that was one that i think it looks at analytics to see who are your your top influencers yeah uh in, in your group so those are the people you say you you kind of direct a little bit of action to yeah. um crowd booster is one that says hey this is the hot topic of the day pretty much and gives you some stuff to kind of uh share around uh, and count content. No, I'm sorry. No, con, content, That's content gems, gems was was that one. Crowd booster was was another kind of analytically kind of help. right for your most engaged followers. Right, right. I think I, I think I mixed I think I mixed up those. Okay, so so step each of those back one and uh, but but still yeah. really. So triangulate. That was right. Like your most influential. Your 100 most influential followers and then mm -hmm. crowd boosters your most engaged followers which i mean just with those two pieces of information the amount of things you can do if you're having some sort of like social media event or mm -hmm. you know if you're doing some sort of promotion to be able to concentrate that on those people that's amazing uh, and then yeah content gems is uh, the one that uh, is for it's, it's like a digest of uh, mm -hmm. social media blogs really and 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 and, and, and Chile, you'll probably be interested in this because um, I talked to because it was great going in because I ran into all the people that we deal with when we're putting together PodCamp Pittsburgh, uh, mm -hmm. in, including the IT guy there, and and he told me this beforehand, and and and, and Sri, uh, you know, fully talked about this as well about using these mobile devices wherever you go. Uh, mm -hmm. One, I think he had a Chromebook up there. I wasn't close enough, but I think I saw the logo on that thing. But he was mm -hmm. running the presentation off of his iPhone, which I think was the bigger iPhone. Uh, at, at yeah. six actually six plus because it was turning it was turning the icons whenever he turned it the one way I saw um, <laughs> to the point where uh, he, he hit the battery warning and there's the 20% battery warning on the big yeah. screen <laughs> which was so funny to me because one of his ABCs was always be charging yes phone. <laughs> always be charging your phone he, he plugged the Mophie for instance um, and I guess he had a VGA adapter I didn't know you could get a VGA adapter from like lightning maybe he's like daisy chain you dongles you can no still? you you can you can and even I think you could VGA off the 30 pin too because I I've you could seen have. a yeah. couple people do some crazy um, like PowerPoint type presentations from a phone mm -hmm. um, that, that's one of the things I I've been always been playing with right even from work a work perspective is how to get get down to that mobile device and, and kind of have everything in your pocket I think I think we're getting closer and closer and closer as time moves on mm -hmm. and you, um, you saw some problems too like sometimes he'd swipe weird and it would throw into a different app or something like that plus all of his tweets responses and likes and direct messages were popping up at the top of the projector yeah uh, every so, time somebody liked something on Instagram yeah Yep, I got. Which was a lot. I was like, "How are you getting that many likes?" <laughs> That's one of those things where I don't understand why people don't use the um, "do not disturb." Uh, right. Well, "do not disturb" doesn't work if you're in an app. It works when it's it's locked, unless there's a different setting I don't know of. But I think, uh, I think there's a I think there's a setting you can use where you can go through and pick what actually comes up and "do not disturb." Oh, and, okay. And, and certain you can do certain things with like your favorite contacts. It'll only ring if it's those contacts. And I don't, I don't, I don't think it has to do with, with the locked theory. Because mm -hmm. um, I've seen, I, I've, well, I hope I'm right because I've recommended it for some people giving presentations, and I didn't get any negative feedback. Um, but it, and that's one of the things I, I look at, like the Apple Watch. So now I can drive a lot of those those types of notifications to the watch but not on to the screen of my device mm -hmm. um, so i think that's going to be a big a bigger thing upcoming and, and just think about it he'll he could set down the phone and control the the presentation from a watch which would be interesting um, i've seen some people present also from an ipad and use the remote control on the phone so the ipad's plugged in to do the present presentation and all the control is, is from the phone. 
Um, I've seen a lot of people actually do that. I, I, I've never seen him interact with a Chromebook. That, that's interesting. Well, I don't think he, no, he wasn't, he was really, uh, I was told he was just char he was just charging the phone off of the Chromebook. Like the Chrome, oh, okay. he, even he admitted the Chromebook was Jerry as a facade. So <laughs> just, just as a placeholder, you know, so everybody felt comfortable. Um, but uh, no, tremendous talk. And I think it's going to be available online. They were streaming live. It looked like they were probably using YouTube live, which means it's probably cached up there. I have the link. Uh, was oh, actually I found it right here. So let's see if that's up there. Um, but uh, I, I imagine it's going to be up there for you guys to check out. Definitely work. My sister was watching in the second half because they actually had a where did I put everything? They actually had a panel discussion with um, a lot of pretty important people. Um, and actually, oh, here's the footage right here. And it is available. It's about uh, two two hours, a little over two hours. Um, and yeah, it looked like they just plugged the camera into that, and they were they were good to go. Uh, Charlie Batch from the Steelers, of course. Um, uh, uh, Cassandra uh, Bunsey from Black and Gold Girls. PGH Ballet was was uh, represented. Uh, Josh Rollerson from uh, uh, WESA, which is our local um, um, public radio. Uh, Rob Rossi from the Trib. Uh, Smith Brothers Agency, the Warhol Museum, um, and of course Point Park represented as well. Um, but it was it was a really cool kind of uh, even that back and forth and pretty good discussions about that. I enjoyed it specifically, and maybe Laura, you did too. Um, Charlie Batch and Rob Rossi, because Rob Rossi, of course, mostly writes I think about the Penguins, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and apparently he's not very well liked for the things he writes, as sports reporters are. And I love the the back and forth discussion the two of them had about uh, as public figures. When do you read the comments? When do you read your tweets? Like, you know, uh, Batch was talking about like after a game where he gave up like eight interceptions against the Browns, for instance. You know, um, and 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 why? You know, don't read the tweets when you're expecting good or when you're expecting bad, because if you're there for adulation, and you're going to be very disappointed, right? Uh, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean. Um you know, what Charlie Batch said was that, uh, you know, there are so many athletes who will get in arguments with their Twitter followers that somebody will say something negative about them, you know, and, and tag them in the tweet. And then they'll go uh, on the offensive about it. You know, they'll say, well, you know, you've never played a football game in your life or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, whereas what Charlie Batch was saying was, you know, if, well, one, what he said, which I was just like, I wanted to stand up and cheer was, Football for him was a game, mm -hmm. you know, which was so refreshing, <laughs> um, you know, because I love football as next as the next person, but uh, it, it is, that's, you know, it's, it's somebody's livelihood, but yeah, it's a 60 minute out of your week game. Um, and he was saying that, you know, he made the effort to not, not engage in that sort of negativity, but he also you know, didn't let it, you know, the positivity um, go to his head, you know, give him a big head about what he was doing. Um, you know, he used the example, um, I guess uh, he had a game against Cleveland where things did not go his way um, and everybody hated him. And then the next week uh, he had a game against Baltimore and things did go his way and everybody thought he was the best thing ever. Um, but because he made the concerted decision not to see what people were saying about him when he had eight turnovers. Um, he also didn't go and see what they were saying about him when he won against the Ravens, um, which I think if, if you are that type of person, if you have a public persona, that is such a healthy way to deal with things. Um, and I think it was interesting too, that across the panel, um, these people were saying that, you know, before social media, uh, their jobs were easier. Right, right. You know, so I think that group as a whole has embraced social media because it's not going anywhere and it's necessary. But they have um, they, they have the history without it enough to um, realize that for them to do what they want to do, they can't let it consume them either. There was such a begrudging acceptance of social media yeah. a little bit in there, which is a completely understandable because it does make a little bit of their jobs uh, harder. Um, right, but the and, thing that I loved was that with that begrudging acceptance, they're all rocking it. 
yeah. you know they're not like oh like, why why do we have to use social media they're really good at what they're doing mm -hmm. um you know they just have the understanding that yeah um, social media makes you available to everybody mm -hmm. A lot of talk also, I, I, I thought it was interesting, and this is something that, you know, I, I really kind of subscribe to too, but um, the, the Pittsburgh Ballet uh, person, uh, I'll find the name in a moment, but was really talking about how, uh, like, the biggest the biggest hits for them, the biggest engagement they have is when they're showing behind the scenes. Um, and for me, for the stuff I do here, since it is so, you know, duct tape and, and toilet paper, as we are joking in the last show around here, um, like I said, this is how I do it. You know, it's not high high end kind of stuff and that's been got again a lot of interest experimenting with meerkat when i'm recording some of the shows or or recording stuff on the green screen it's, it's been really really kind of uh, uh hitting pretty good and uh and that that really worked for them as well and 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 even um um Asri was talking about you know when they had a blog where they were showing how they were cleaning some of the paintings and if you're really into art that's going to be interesting to you you know this is the uh dvd extras of everything <laughs> and that's the stuff that people are looking for. If they're into something, if they're into your thing, they want to know how the sausage is made. Yeah. That's maybe yeah. a bad example, though. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought that that was really interesting, too. And, I mean, personally, as a fan of things, that's what's interesting to me. You know, like, um, on the sitcoms when they, you know, it might be, like, the last uh, show of the entire series and they you know, turn the camera around and you see the audience. Like, that's the type of stuff that I have always loved. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, you know, we're fans first. So when we think about what uh, appeals to us, it can really help our social strategy. Awesome. Um... And from that, uh, I think uh, that's the big, the big points from that. If you want to see it, yeah, if you go to uh, Point Park, and um, I will actually get this out somewhere. If you go to uh, my, my Twitter, it, it's tweeted a couple times, and it's cached there. Um, check out the whole talk. Worthwhile. Uh, he has links there for all the slides. Some really good stuff. And I know uh, I had coffee with uh, Dutters and Doug afterwards. And uh, it, and there's a lot of stuff I think we're gonna we we're already thinking about and kind of considering for for what we do, um, so and kind of kind of got got a, a bit out of it. So, well, I want to take a moment here uh, before we get to your awesome thing, Shella. And actually, we got a fourth awesome thing that was contributed on the Twitters. And where's my paper? There it is, slice on Broadway. They're upside down um, here in Beachview in the South Hills of Pittsburgh and of course Carnegie PA when I heard Sri going out was going out to, our, to the airport I almost wanted to give the little pitch say hey stop out for that Carnegie exit and hit up some pizza there uh, in <laughs> Carnegie PA and uh, down on Main Street and, and tell them that that, that we sent you um, <laughs> but but no no he I didn't want him to miss his plane uh, but it would have been worth it it's great stuff they've been helping us out for anybody that you know kind of joins us in the studio there it is I still got some I, uh, oh here it is. There it is. So you can see the product in person. It's, it's a little cold. I got it on the wall. It looks delicious. It looks awesome. It's made from scratch. The best ingredients they can get their hands on. And uh, I love that it's right up the road from me. Even if you're taking the train and you see that sign for Slice on Broadway, Bobby Cherry, get off that train sometime and go check it out. And, uh, and, and tell them the awesome cast sent you. And they're on the social medias since we're talking about that. And they're engaging with their people and making me hungry, uh, especially on Instagram, Slice on Broadway. Uh, PGH underscore Slice and Slice on Broadway on uh, Facebook. That second one was at PGH underscore Slice. I don't think I said Twitter. Oh, also cool. I love that my name tag today had like I could pick my social media. Like, I could pick Twitter and put my handle by it, or I could have picked Facebook or Pinterest or something, or Instagram. That was kind of fun, too. Could you, uh, could you put multiples, or was there just what, what, the, Each one was just like, it had an icon on it, so you picked whatever your main one was, basically. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it kind of went from there. Um, there was something else out of that that really struck me that I now forgot about, because I thought about it mid-ad. Um, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Anyways, oh, there's a lot of good stuff here. I, I I'll probably go into this a little bit on basic ergonomics, um, with all my notes in front of me, and we'll probably go a little deeper into that. So, uh, but no, please go check that out. So, Chilla, you have an awesome thing, and this actually goes with what I talked about on the mini awesome cast a little bit, a little bit. This was your response post, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's what's Instagram doing? 
So, so, and it, this isn't from Instagram. This is oh. a third party. This is a third party app. It does have a little bit of a cost, but I think it's four dollars and ninety nine cents. Yeah, highway robbery. Five bucks. Highway robbery. <laughs> well, you know what? I, you give them credit. They're the first ones to it, right? There's, there's nobody else that has this capability that I know of. There's a lot of ones that there's a lot of apps that you can use to watch to view the feeds. Um, not many that that I'm like I said that I'm aware of that let you share to Instagram. In fact, it, I'll, I'll be surprised if this sticks around for long because usually they're using some kind of exploit they found and in, in Instagram and shuts them out. But I, I for one, hope that they don't go down this path. And I'm hoping now that they're a Facebook entity um, that they will embrace this theory because w one of the things that I think about. And like we were talking about, is this is a this is an app um, uploader for Instagram that allows you to take any of the photos or even direct from the camera on your Mac um, and upload to Instagram. But but to the point of the more and more I look at your data or at least my day to day workflow and and a lot of day to day workflows, it's not to me it's getting more to the point. It's not about replacing all of your devices with a single device. It's about being able to start on a certain device and continue to your next device and then to the next device and all the way back up the chain. So you, so you think about that workflow, right? And you just think about taking a picture. And maybe I take a picture on my phone and I, I take the picture and I don't have time to go out to all my social media um, sites and, and do the uploads right from the phone. So later on, maybe I edit the photo a little bit on my iPad or on a, on a different mobile device. I mean, obviously Google Drive can, can host the files and whatnot. Um, edit it on a tablet of some sort, and then later on I'm sitting at a PC and I'm like, oh, I need to upload that photo. Um, to me, it's about the, the anytime, anywhere access to whatever content you're trying to get to or feed, um, whether it's posting a blog or or tweeting or whatever uh, Instagram photos. To me, this helps bridge that gap. And, and like I said, I hope that Instagram embraces this and doesn't try to necessarily shut it down. Um, I know they've, they've shut down things on the Windows Phone in the past. Um, the interesting thing is that you can kind of right click on a picture and, and say share to Instagram. Um, right from the content context menu, um, they do have some. They actually have their own filters um, hmm. built in. You can also use your your eyesight camera on your Mac to then to take a picture. Right, like I said, right from the camera. I don't, I don't see much use in that unless you're trying to get a bunch of selfies. But well, let's be honest. That might be okay. <laughs> or you're yeah. walking around with a 12 inch MacBook going, hey, you know. <laughs> You're taking <laughs> selfies at the Met with uh, with your MacBook. But, it, but, but like I was saying, I, I think this just helps bridge that gap. It'll be interesting to see, like, will we get some kind of person, to your point, taking a selfie of other people taking selfies? Mm -hmm. the, the one the one picture of, oh, and I can't remember where it was from. Was it from the Grammys or the Emmys? The the selfie of, of everybody. It was the Oscars. Samsung device? The yeah. Oscars. To me, that was, they had a picture of a bunch of people claiming to take a picture of themselves, but the camera was in it. So was it really a selfie? I don't know. It's like but a, anyway, it's like a, a meta heard. selfie. <laughs> like if I take a picture of you taking a picture of yourself and I post that picture, mm -hmm. is it really a selfie? This is getting really meta. <laughs> because I'm, because you're, it's, it's a picture of you taking a picture of yourself, whatever. But anyway, anyways, so, so this is my awesome thing of the week because, like I said, I'm, I'm looking for that that, and I don't want to call it, uh, but app or Mac, Microsoft's calling it Continuum, and, and their, Apple has their own name for continuity. Um, to me, that 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 continuity theory is the way of the future, not necessarily, mm -hmm. and until we get robots and transformers that my phone can then transform into a laptop. Um, I see this really bridging that type of gap. And I'd like to see more things come of this 
where I have the same app to maybe blog from a phone, and, and Tumblr's doing a good job with this. Mm -hmm. the, the phone, the, the app on my computer, and the app on a tablet. And even even something to make it just a little bit easier for for poor guys like me that have multiple Instagram accounts. For like the only reason I'm not opening more Instagrams for more of the properties I work with is time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, I, I put out, I've been putting out more and more clips of Instagrams on on my own on wrestling ma'am show on my my clients on monday and it's 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 a pain because there's no easy um account switching you have to log straight in and out i know it's kind of a very for, oh i gotta log in and out you know but still it yeah, but is it, but to your point it's a barrier right but it's, it, it is it a barrier from it, doing it it does keep i'm 100 percent with you yeah yeah i mean it, it, it is um now now Another bear. It, this is kind of a side awesome thing. I, I just, since this was the thing you responded to on, on the uh, awesome cast group on Facebook today, um, this morning I actually talked about the other Instagram news was Instagram itself is actually putting out an app. Um, uh, what was it called? Stitcher, I think. No, not Stitcher. That's something else. Uh, but, you know, there's all those apps out there of, you know, you can collage photos together. And now Instagram is doing their own separate app that does that. Much like Hyperlapse is an independent thing, they're Facebooking, you know, things by put them out in extra apps, you know, much like we have chat groups, you know, Facebook over there. Um, and uh, it, it's expected, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah. well, at this it's, point. it's interesting because I, I, I think coming up this week, is it towards the end of the week, is Facebook's F9? Dev conference. F5, F9, what is it? Something like that. F8. I can't remember. F8. Oh. F8. F8. F5 um, is a wrestling move. Uh, slash Tornado. I think it's F8. I'm pretty sure it's F8. Isn't F9 refresh in, in, in most Windows apps? Tell you what, I'm not going to I'm not gonna press <laughs> it here, just to be safe. <laughs> it, but to the, to the point where like I'm hearing all these things coming out of Instagram, and, and one of the other topics I have is a Facebook topic. Um, and there's a lot of information coming out. I'm surprised it's coming out now because I don't think their conference has kicked off yet. So either mm. they're having an issue leaking information or they want a lot of information to leak of what they're going to be talking about um, as their conference kicks off. Certainly. Certainly. All right. And we got, uh, like I said, an awesome thing of the week. Uh, uh, actually donated um, via Twitter by Doug Durda. Douglas Dirt on the Twitter, should I drink that.com? And this is uh, through Wired. It is Disney's billion dollar bet on a magical wristband. We, I think we brought this up before. Didn't we have this on with Krauss when we were talking about uh, um, wrist devices and, and, and such? Like, this is how they're doing it. They're fast pass and everything. And uh, this article really gets into what exactly is going on with that um, uh, there at, at Disney. Um, see, it's like magic. A woman says to her family as they sit, "How do you find our table?" It, 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 it's it's one. It's more tracking. Um, they know exactly what's going on. They they know what rides and how many people are getting on the rides and everything. Um, this, which really, in my mind, goes along to this a fascinating thing I heard today from uh, Smith Brothers Agency. Um, there's a Facebook thing. Kind of aside here, there was a Facebook thing that. Um, Apparently, via your email address in Facebook, they can match that up with if you have a Giant Eagle card, and they know if you saw an ad and you went and bought that thing at Giant Eagle. Yeah, how about that? That was they, like when she said that. I was like, it was said. It was hate. it was presented kind of low key, and I'm just like, wait, what? You know, yeah. uh, but but wait, that, so if you have if you have your email address associated with your Giant Eagle card. And you see an ad, and then in Facebook, and you purchase something yeah. at Giant Eagle. Yeah, they know that you saw. Wow, they connect. I mean, that. it makes sense though. Like I was looking at stuff on Home Depot, um, and you know, through Google, which my Gmail account is through, obviously, and you know, then I was getting an ad every day for that product on Facebook, and you know, wherever else yeah. on my Google Absolutely. AdWords. So the next logical step is that, okay, now we're going to see if you actually buy it. This is the point where I show off my awesomely beat up uh, Gecko card. And if you got <laughs> Gecko cards, you know they don't look anything like this anymore, right? And it's even got a crack in there, right? But yet, amazingly, this thing still works at the Gecko pump. 
so I can get my three cents off if I'm randomly by a gecko. I don't go to Giant Eagle at all. But the, the one thing, and that's always been a hard thing to solve, right? It was mm -hmm. it was easy to see how many people saw the advertisement, and it was easy to figure it's, out it's a, that it's a, how many people bought something. But it's it was very a, very difficult to correlate right. who saw it and who bought it. It's right, a, especially with if somebody's actually going to the store, Giant right, Eagle, and buying right. it versus buying it online and putting in their email address to get a confirmation. It's a meat space click through is what it is. Yeah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> anyways, speaking of meat spaces, Disney world. Um, yeah, basically doing uh, more of the same thing and really kind of opening it up. There are magic bands, text studded wristbands available to every visitor in the Mag magic kingdom feature a long range radio that can transmit more than 40 feet in every direction. So holy, uh, uh, eye beacon. Um, <laughs> And uh, the hostess on her modified iPhone receives a signal when the family was just a few paces away. <laughs> Can you find and, a missing kid with that? I think I think that's that's got to be part of it, right? I, I um, think it's uh, if it's not available today, it's something that they're going to have very yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. But you got to think this is you know we talk about Disney or I'm sorry uh, Google, Google having this idea. We want our own island to experiment with. Guess what Disney has? Disney has a closed <laughs> Disney, yeah, the world. Disney has a closed economy and ecosystem that they can just do this stuff, right? Like, well, and see, I, I hope people look at this and adopt the technology because, as as someone that works for a large company with multiple buildings, and within those buildings, obviously multiple floors, and with on those within those floors, multiple cubes and and office space offices and 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 conference rooms. If you asked me where conference room B was on the 34th floor of a specific building, I'd be like, I have no clue. So when I, when I show up to certain, certain venues to, to either give a presentation or do something, I have no, like I have to show up an easy 15 minutes early just to figure out where I'm going. And, and to me that, that whole wristband theory and, then being able to like right. pull up a phone or some kind of device and geo track where I actually need to go to me is, is huge as well as potentially being able to figure out where someone physically is within the confines of the buildings. So if I need to get a hold of them or go find them, I can do such wow. a thing. Um, this is where I, I hope yes. that other companies adopt this technology and it just isn't something that's that that stays in the confines of the magic kingdom mm -hmm. this is um and it's showing geez it's showing an, illustri <laughs> it's showing it's an, an empty, empty couch. couch there you go um <laughs> there's a you know illustration this, it, this is replacing the maps passes cards entirely in this system that's amazing that's awesome and hey less paper space less paper mm -hmm. waste for yeah. instance um, everybody loves that save the environment exactly Exactly. And, and I didn't, I didn't read the full article as a, as, as a person that's going, if you are going to Disney world, Disneyland, um, and they have that capability, do you pay extra for that? Or is no, that they say, that's... it's saying that it's, it's available. Well, it says it's available to everybody. I, it has to be just generally to keep that consistency. Yeah. So okay. I, I think it's one of those, from what I'm gathering from this, it looks like uh, you know one of those. You go into a place and it's, you got Disney bucks, right? You know, mm -hmm. you you put you, which is great because then the kid can just like have like, hey, here's your allotment, or maybe not, because <laughs> it's attached to a credit card. So you know, eh, friction free means hey, we can just get our bunny ears whenever we want, or not bunny ears. I'm sorry, Mickey no ears. ears. Come ears. on, I I'm a bad Disney. I've never been to Disney World. I have no. Um, anyways, I miss SeaWorld myself. Um, hey, something I've been playing with is I, I, I'm not into it enough to determine it to be an awesome thing of the week. Um, but it's Clamor. These guys actually reached out to us. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play with a little bit. And we talked about maybe we'll, we'll try to get them on Awesome Cast here sooner or later if we see how this goes. Um, Interesting idea. How about let me let me do the pitch of what this seems to be. Uh, how about an app where all it is, you know, hey, you like podcasts, but you hate when they get too long. How about an app where everything is eighteen seconds? Hmm. 
<laughs> so you get in here, and, and for me, I've been able to make a channel for Sorgatron Media. Uh, I want to. This is going to be the first big test run this week. It was. I'm going to have all the shows from tonight. You know, five of our podcasts. I'll make little 18 second clips, and uh, it's gotten really responsive. I have a lot of people following me. It lets me know when I've met. 10 times that people have listened to the things and I don't know if I'm just not getting any higher than that or or that's just the only thing they let us know but you pop in here and uh it's a nice interface like I said you can just kind of roll through on a channel or um you know for instance there's a tech news one I noticed there's a lot of people attached to this Gizmodo tech uh this week in tech is is on here uh in gadget um so there's a presence there people are on board with this thing uh, but I'm just kind of wondering, there seems to be people on it. There, there's like 30 some people already following us and we're not usually a, a, a brand that really people hop on, you know, especially in comparison with some of these big wigs out there, but maybe they're able to just funnel through all this stuff. And, um, and, and, and it's, it seems like a pretty good cool discovery tool because everything's attached to, if you, if you look in here, um, let's see, we got Venture Beat, for instance, they're giving me a little bit about the in Instagram uh, collage feature that we talked about, and there's a read more button, and it'll pop right to the article. Or you can actually set that to a watch more into a YouTube video that'll open right up, or even listen to more, and it's the full MP3. So I can just attach our full MP3 of like, say, this awesome cast episode. Yeah. Yeah, that's great because I mean, I know for Instagram, it's always so annoying when, you know, somebody posts something and they're like, oh, this, you know, it's a screenshot of an article. Mm -hmm. um, and then they say read more at and they type out the uh, the URL, but you can't actually click on it. Right. You know, that's right, right, right. fantastic. That's and that's why I keep it simple. Like I, I, when I do the Instagram thing, I, I, and I another one, because now I have a workflow. Because my first response was like, I don't know if I have the bandwidth to set up an 18 second clip for everything I want to put on here. But I got to thinking about it. I'm already looking at, I, I fell out and I'm getting back into doing the Instagram clips, which I got some really cool feedback about today, actually. Um, and I just, for me, yeah, maybe this is a little social media tip. Um, I have, I do everything in Final Cut because we're doing everything video, of course, and it just kind of boils down to audio for a lot of things. So I have an 18 second clip placeholder in my templates on uh, Final Cut. So I go find an 18 second clip, and usually I'll have an idea, especially with something I just recorded in the morning, and they're a lot shorter than this show, for instance. Um, then I take that clip, pull it over in the one that I have for video that's set for 30 seconds for Twitter, but I got a marker to see where that is on Instagram. I see where it mostly makes sense. It's not going to be entirely perfect, of course. Um, and I spout those out and I put them up on their individual programs. And, uh, that's how we, you know, hit all the bite sized bits. Do, so, so back to our conversation about click through and, 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 and giant eagle and whatnot does, <laughs> does clamor have a way to figure out or feed off of how many people clicked through the watch more or listen to more or it, anything like that it's coming uh all they really have right now is plays and actually i'm not entirely sure how i see how many plays i got as a provider Mm -hmm. um, I have how many clamors following followers and that's it. Now, when I look at other people's stuff, it appears that I can see, um, like how many plays they got, for instance, like I looked at the, the venture beat one had like 150 plays. So, so the one thing I, then I, I think it would be interesting to see how other people take this and learn from it. Um, cause hmm. as, as Laura was speaking about earlier, um, and at the demo day mm -hmm. and having having the ability or or kind of giving your pitch right mm -hmm. so the, the thing that i've learned and and have told others about in a, in a twitter world is when you get to the corporate world everything is is the short snippets short sentences get your point across get right. the characters down per se right right and, and get that out there to me, this is a, just another learning tool for people to say, look, you have 18 seconds to make your pitch. Make it count. That'd be tremendous. So yeah. What, what's interesting is, is can we now learn from this and say, okay, we have 18 seconds to make our pitch count, and did it work? So am I getting a click through? Am I seeing people, people watch it and click through? Because mm -hmm. I'm guessing you don't just want – and, and maybe I'm wrong. You don't just want people watching that 18 seconds. No, right? no. Want some, I, I want, want people to go through here. Like, I, I let's see. I can mm -hmm. skip through here. Now, here's here's the cool thing. And, and of course, you go through here. And like, oh, I kind of dig this. 
and you can share it. It gives you your options, right? Um, now let me let me pop back into here the, where I was playing these. Now, like I want people to listen to it, and now if they listen through, I'll get that hit, and I'll see uh, now I'll see that on my podcast stats, and that's something else that mm-hmm. you know that I can say, hey, look, there's more stuff here, and 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 because. For me, I'm selling the ad or I'm selling the show that says, hey, go go check out my newsletter um, here. Like and now we have well, here's a, a my morning sh- one of my morning shows, uh, Basic Sorgonomics from this morning, talking about newsletters, actually. And I hear more. And I like this. The MP3 loads right in there. That's perfect. So it's yeah, right into in the show. Mind. So even I think generally when I have a video show, I think I'm going to lean towards putting the audio version in here just for mm-hmm. you're on a phone. It's more accessible for you. Right. Uh, now I have a couple shows that there's no, no, I, th- I think most of the stuff can go in here. Um, I've been playing back and forth with a lot of them or even send them to the site, but then there's like, there's a link there and there's an MP3 post, but it's not really optimized for the phone yet. So let's just click a link. They listen to the thing. And if they're engaged, they'll follow us and they'll follow along to everywhere else that we're at. Hopefully. Right. So now, I mean, will it, give does it, it have entry any offline point. cache capability? Uh, probably not. <laughs> and that's the one thing. So, so for me as a podcast podcast listener, that I really look for in a lot of what I do is I, I sync up before I leave in the morning. I'm on the train on my way to work, um, mm-hmm. and I lose signal one, two, three times on the way into work. Yeah. Um, for for decent periods of time um so that's the one thing that i look for at or i would if, if they were on the show i would say you know have you thought about if i'm subscribing to something and there's the 18 second clips right let me cash i don't know 100 18 second clips it's not going to be that much time um and then i can almost dog ear or bookmark what I would want to go back to when I have signal or when, mm-hmm. when, when I have the time uh, that that's something that I heavily leverage things like get pocket for, right. Mm-hmm. Um, may see something, whether it's a link in a tweet or a link uh, or a news article I'm reading. And I just don't have the time in between a meeting or while I'm waiting in line at Starbucks to, to fully um, take in all of the content. And I just, send it to pocket and I, I read it later. So and that's one thing that I do really like about pocket. It also has the offline capabilities. Uh, Chilla, I, uh, we got to get rolling out of here, but uh, can you pick one of your stories here? You mentioned the uh, Facebook and time hop. I think that's probably the one we want to hit up on, right? Uh, and I, and I th- said, dear Facebook, if you invented time hop, you would have invented time hop. If you remember the, <laughs> <laughs> the movie, um, if you invented Facebook, well then you would have invented Facebook, but mm-hmm. and. It, I read this on a couple of different sites and unfortunately the last site I hit was ABC news, but, um, so it's probably not as tech journalistic as, as some of the other sites that are covering this, but it lets you keep track of your history. And it, it's like this day on this day, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, um, it can pull back information from Facebook. The thing that I find interesting is, is obviously this cape keeps you in the Facebook universe. It's not like it's gonna, maybe they'll add in, some in, well, Instagram would post to Facebook, but um, you're not going to get your Twitter. You're not going to get your photo backups. You're not going to get, and that's the one thing that surprises me that I never realized in time hop that I would actually get a lot of use out of is the, the fact that it will go back into your iCloud photos and, and, and photos on the, on the device yeah, and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and just kind of now I'm looking down at my time. Hop. Um, but it, to me, seeing all of the social media feeds in time hop means a lot more to me than just seeing than if I were to just see Facebook. Um, so I think they're counting on a lot here, and, and I really don't see what they're trying to do. The only thing I can say is is that MySpace has never seen so much traffic as as since. Throwback Thursday started. Um, <laughs> a, a lot of people have started going back into Facebook to get their Throwback Thursday content. So maybe this is their yeah. way to, to stay yeah. relevant as as people are looking elsewhere to to go back and get additional content. Awesome, 
Awesome. Well, on that note, uh, if you want to check out more, like we, we I say, like we're doing the mini awesome cast. I touched on things like uh, that Instagram uh, other app that we talked about, uh, the Windows 10 uh, licensing for pirates. Apparently, um, of course, there's a little bit of a debate since then on on that kind of situation, um, and, and a lot more. Again, a little kind of daily thing on the stuff that you know, kind of because always that thing comes out Wednesday morning. And we never take that time because it's old news by the time we get to it here on Tuesdays. So that's kind of our chance to do that. Oh, virtual reality room. Freaking awesome at Virginia Tech. Check out the the, the, the episode on that as well. Coming up, uh, speaking a lot on social media, I kind of got called out for not asking a question about podcasting today. Thank you, Patty Swisher, for that one. Um, but uh, I will be talking about podcasting uh, this Thursday particularly if you're a practitioner, uh, is kind of the target of this one. Uh, but podcasting essential for practitioners. It's in conjunction with our friends at lifestyle, uh, the journal of lifestyle medicine.com. You can find all the information on there. RSVP with us on Facebook and meetup.com. Uh, they, they got a great group over there. If you're a uh, you know, practitioner, yoga instructor, acupuncturist, you know, that kind of stuff, uh, really kind of looking at you and a, and a great, great piece Finn Hosford works on over there. And I talk a little bit about the importance, uh, quick video on there, kind of as a preview, uh, talking about the importance of, of podcasting, what we can do with it, especially with Google Hangout as we're using here, as we, and we just did that completely in Google Hangout to show you the kind of quality you can get out of it with really not a lot of money. Then we'll, we'll talk about there Tuesday night. It's at Rollins in the Strip, which I believe is a seafood place, if I'm not mistaken. So, Kind of fancy. I hope there's a giant sword fist behind me wherever I'm presenting. Uh, so please go check that out. Journal of Lifestyle Medicine.com. Also coming up, um, starting I, I think I think officially the party is Friday night. Our friends PGH365 from AIGA Pittsburgh. John DeGore, uh, Diggy on the Twitters, uh, who's been on the show a couple of times. Uh, he's a part of this as well. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to that. Go check it out. Pittsburgh.ia. AIGA.org uh, for more information on that. TEDx Pittsburgh call for speakers is out there. They're, they're uh, uh, bridges, ideas that connect the region is the theme for this week. Um, actually had a great uh, talk with uh, Educational Grand Rounds with Krishna. I'll just call him Krishna again, another name I can't really pronounce uh, on uh, seclair.com. Um, about his uh, 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 thoughts on his books, Beyond the Pig and the Ape. Um, um, and another guy that spoke here at, at one of the original, they're officially TEDx Pittsburgh. I think these guys used to be uh, TEDx Grandview Ave, uh, kind of did a brand change there. And I think there used to be another TEDx Pittsburgh. Also coming up, Pittsburgh Co Technology Council. This is something I'm really interested in. I'm hoping I can get the scratch up to go to this thing. Uh, the Create Festival is happening around the Three Rivers Art Festival here in town. Uh, June 10th, 5 p.m. starting off, apparently, um, around the at the Windham grand hotel oh that fancy hotel down there chachi and i have a story about that hotel from back in the day anyways um go check that out it's at a uh, uh, pghtech.org of course there's more information and other than that uh and i don't know if there's any info on his blog but Yajagoff is actually going to be presenting um i think april 11th i know i'm i'm uh, up north for um for a wrestling event i'm working but uh he's doing a presentation based on his book uh, I want to get the name out, Above the Fries. Uh, you, you look for information at yajagoff.com. I don't see anything just yet, but stay tuned on the yajagoff.com for that. Down at the great arcade uh, arcade comedy theater, which again, if you want to see what that looks like inside, if you're a geek, you're going to love it because they have actually have arcades. Like There's a tabletop Pac-Man game in the front. It's pretty cool. Uh, just for the experience, go check that out. Um, if you're not hitting up Sister Sorella's this week. And I think that's about everything. Chilla, anything else new and awesome coming up on your end? On my end? I uh, don't think so. I haven't heard of any new or announcements. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we, we have some stuff coming up. Something in the about a watch. Ahead, nothing, I don't know. Soon. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so you're at Chilla on the Twitters. John Chilla on the Facebooks and on the Google Pluses. No, not John Carmen, but that's okay. Not we, John Carmen. He, he does cool stuff too, <laughs> and we actually should get him back on the show. We're, we're way overdue for that. Laura, thanks for joining us. Uh, where thanks can people find you? Anything else you want to plug? Now is your floor. Yes, go uh, on innovationworks.org. We have a position open for the 412 Build Program Coordinator. It's a summer program um, where local students are going to learn how to become makers um, and we have a position open um, it's a full-time position uh, innovationworks.org slash careers is where you'll find it 
I love the maker stuff. I wish I was more handy. <laughs> <laughs> Me I wish, too. <laughs> I wish I was handy enough to justify having a 3D printer or access to one with a tech shop uh, subscription. Uh, so, um, awesome. Go check out all that stuff. Innovation Works is the coolest stuff coming out. I've been following it for years here. You can check us out, awesomecast.net, live.awesomecast.net if you want to join us around 6.43 p.m. Eastern time um, over there. You can join us in the chat room like uh, so many have. Um, Google Plus, Facebook, a great Facebook group for AwesomeCast, AwesomeCast on the Twitter, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, all the links over at awesomecast.net. Big thanks, Mike Allen, at Mike Allen PR helping with the uh, show notes and tweets all night long and uh, getting us helping get us some attention while we're busy talking. I love the titles. Title Titles for this night. How the Sausage is Made slash F5 is a Wrestling Move. <laughs> Crossing over shows there. There you go. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Thanks to our awesome guests. Have an awesome week. We're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.